no golden answer, but yeah, for a sheep producer that um, knows he's got dogs and just waiting for that predation of, uh, attack, yeah, it, you don't sleep real well at night. Imagine trying to pay four or five hundred dollars for a preg tested young ewe, knowing that you've got puppy dogs just waiting to chew them up. Um, pretty frightening. Um, and you just know that if you can't get on top of them and your predation keeps going, you probably got a serious question mark, can you continue to be a sheep grower? They could get around, they could knock 20 sheep. They might kill them, but they've affected them. Um, young calves, you know, they get bitten and it's dirt up. You're trying to work them or anything like that. And then when they do, they do kill your sheep, you know, well, it's at the market now. Like, it's a couple hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. You might as well get a cigarette lighter. You know, that's illegal to do, but light, start lighting money on fire because that's all it's doing. It affects everyone in different ways. And it gives you a bit of a mental thing too, like, um, oh, you know, you wake up in the morning and go, what drama am I going to walk out to in the paddock now? I'm based in Broken Hill and I cover um, country right up in through to Tibberborough, um, across to Wenaring, down along the river towards Tilpa, um, into Wilcannia and Ivanhoe with some baiting groups and then back around through to Broken Hill. We're, um, we've just completed our aerial baiting program. It's our biggest one yet. We've just put out 63,000 baits. That's involved 155 landholders. And we're now into our second stage of our seasonal baiting program, which is our ground baiting. The ground baiting this season has involved 20 pest groups and numerous spy security staff across Western take on numerous groups. And then we're all coordinating our baiting days so trying to get that coordinated approach to getting all our baiting in sync together. So we're trying to cover as much country as we possibly can in the shortest amount of time. Having a group and coordinated approach is pretty much the only way we can go to get a, um, an impact, make an impact on any feral animals out here. Otherwise we're just operating you know, a one out sort of approach which is ineffective because it's just like a vacuum, we knock out some feral animals and more just move in to replace them. It's the only way to go, as far as I can see. The idea of coming together as a group and saying, now we're going to bait a big chunk of country all in that day or two day period, no matter where the dog is, he should be exposed to a, to a bait line. So that was sort of the impetus of, of, of groups coming together and it's sort of grown quite considerably since then, to the point where now um, pretty much the whole of the West Division is broken up into uh, various sized pest management groups, which is probably sort of what we like to call ourselves. Um, and, and this whole coordination thing is, is, is sort of really come to the fore. So there's many tools to control wild dogs and foxes and cats. Um, baiting is probably the, one of the most easiest tools to use. It's the least labour intensive but it's certainly not the silver bullet. No one tool is a silver bullet. So we also make use of trapping, and obviously we've got our professional wild dog controller program. Uh, g'day, my name's Wayne Priest. Um, I'm a professional wild dog controller for the LLS Western. Been working, living, trapping out here for well, the best part of 25 years. Got to know a lot of, lot of landholders out in this Western division, so it's been really good. Um, now the LLS will come on board with this trapping program. We sort of stepped into that now and taken over a, uh, a lot of country, getting getting a lot of dogs. It's a good initiative. The government are supporting us, so I think it's uh, the best thing that's happened really um, in the Western Division for dog control is uh, getting us trappers in there and, and educating a lot of the, the property owners and the, and the town folk on how much damage these dogs are doing. They, uh, you only got to look at the, the stock prices at the moment. There's a lot of incentive there to, to get rid of these dogs, that's for sure. Getting in touch with your local biosecurity officer is really important. Landholders are the eyes and the ears on, on the ground for us and we can't help tailor our programs unless we're hearing from everybody. So yeah, really get your message across, let us know what you're seeing on the ground so then we can help improve our programs accordingly.